one I have a problem getting this worker to stop. Okay guys, so we just spoke to this Russian engineer on the phone. He can come over today, which is a bit last minute. It is the weekend, but uh, if he gets things moving, these are things that you have to accommodate for just to speed up the overall process, basically. He asked me to check um, the joists. Uh, I'll just show you. So the wall, the wall we want to move downstairs, uh, we want to remove the, that that wall is basically underneath this wall, I believe. But I'm just going to check or where the joists sit, and I'm assuming the joists run along this way. Normally, the timber runs across the shorter length of the room. Um, so I'm going to move the carpet and try to move a board with him. If I can do it before he gets here in 10 minutes, that'll be great. And I can kind of walk you through exactly what they look for, and just to give you some heads up if you're thinking about removing any walls in your house and how the structural procedure works. All right, see you in a bit. I would rather go here and open up the floor, but the radiator is there, so that might cause inconvenience. So I think I'll do this side. Liz, come help me. Oh, that was quite easy. That came off nice. Yeah. Pause now. Go. Uh, the more space, the better. I just noticed this one's a little loose. It makes it easier to actually remove the floor. And it's the shortest one there as well. Yeah, it's the shortest one. So all we want to do is just reveal the, the structure of the, the house, basically, in the joist work. So I'm going to remove these carpet grippers. Oh. Well, we're getting the shot then. Alright, the reason that this is already open is probably because see this socket over here? They probably done some wiring in the past, so they would have revealed this part, so that's what was handy. Okay. Beautiful. There you go, I was right. So look, I'll show them the wiring. So that's the wiring that was done, so that's the reason why they had to take this board up, so it made it a lot easier. Yeah. So now you can see the joists are running this way, so if you zoom out on this. All the joists in this house are running that way, which is parallel to the wall downstairs. And it's also parallel running along with the wall here. All right, let's take you down closer. I'm not sure if you can see, but that's actually brick there. It's all brick. So that means probably is, and it looks like it's connected to the wall downstairs. One way of checking to see if that is load bearing is to do this. Look at the alignment of the wall and go upstairs and use any reference points. But I use the carpet to work my way down here. That's where the wall is downstairs. So as you can see, it meets up where the wall is here. Kind of shows you that this wall is resting on the one downstairs. It can help you a lot on cost because if you're aiming to save money, a load bearing wall calculation will be double the price of a non-load bearing wall calculation. If you want to know how much those costs are and you're not sure how much you're paying for your calculations, if it's too expensive, just comment down below and we can answer those questions for you. At this point, the structural engineer arrived to the scene. When the structural engineer is over, make sure you really maximize the time you have with them and work out all the options you can take before the work starts. Um. All right, so we just done a few calculations and, or just observation, uh, what we could do with this potential wall removal. Hi, my name's A company's called Your Calculations. You can find us at Comment below if you need info. .co.uk. So we just spoke to our structural engineer, he just now left, and he gave us a big insight of what we can actually do with this wall behind us. Basically, if you can see that massive hole, I think Lizelle got me knocking that out, actually. That's just to find out what exactly that area of that wall is sitting on. Is it timber, is it brick? We established... There's a brick wall here, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a brick wall in there. I'm not sure if you can see that. And um, obviously it slants. It's not tall enough to accommodate the wall. I mean, not the wall, the RSJ beam going across there. It does finish off about here. So he given us an option to put steel post over here. And then that goes high enough to then support the RSJ beam from that end all the way down to that end. And we have to keep a little bit of the wall over here, which is 450 centimeters. And if you look at that from this perspective. It will literally be open all the way from here. Yeah. All the way down. To there. Okay. Now that's included two extra elements that we didn't have originally, and it jumped a price up by a bit, isn't it? But what you've got to understand is that there's two more structural calculations involved. It's obviously that part there, there's another post there. So that's gonna be load bearing onto the, the wall that's there, that's slanting with the stairs. And actually, once we remove this, this wall out, there'll be an issue here. This this wall kind of will be weak. The structural engineer told us that it'll be a bit weak and it would be advisable to put a RSJ beam from here to there and the part where my hand is now, that'll be kind of attached onto the long RSJ beam that's fully opening up this whole wall. 
and that beam as I discussed will be going and as I said that beam from there will go through here to there and yeah an RSA beam here so there's technically three and that all totaled up to a bit more money yeah so a bit more expensive but we think it's worth it yeah we we'll think it's worth it what do you think would you, do you think it's worth doing that would you over here uh, would you desire that in your house? Would you prefer it to be fully, fully open? Or would you save the money? Leave it. Here. I have a problem getting this worker to stop.